Before leaving Brightlingsea and heading north, there are just two more creeks to explore. Flag Creek runs up from the islands in Brightlingsea Harbour. They're covered with incomprehensible geometric patterns cut into the salt marsh. And shapes like these can be seen all across the marshes. Obvious signs of human activity. What they are, I have no real idea. Salt pans, oyster pens, small docks. You can waste a lot of time on Google Earth trying to find them and speculating about their function. There's a wharf here. Presumably a barge could get in there. But of course, you know, they must have had to do an awful lot of digging in the Essex mud to keep these things clear. I mean, you can see how quickly that gets recolonised by the mud and the plants that he fills up. And not so long ago, you could have got a boat in there. So, and you can see there's a kind of bank behind it, so you could get a cart down to it. Now, policing these wharfs would have been impossible. I mean, you imagine, I passed 15 along these rivers, 15 old wharfs where you could get a cart. The customs and excise blokes didn't stand a chance. Flag Creek is a lovely place for an afternoon sail. And at the top, there's a fine collection of yachts and a few bigger sailing vessels. Some in genteel decline. It's really hard to guess what some of these boats were used for. While others are undergoing renovation. It's not in the water, it's on a floating dock. There's a massive covered floating dock where barges are rebuilt. But you don't have long at the top of Flag Creek unless you're staying, because the tide will soon strand you. And when it goes away, there's barely enough water for a duck to swim in. There's a causeway across the top of the creek. It holds back water to create a sort of playpen for water skiers and jet skis to make washes and noise. It's a great idea if it keeps the buggers away from making a general nuisance of themselves out on the creeks and rivers. St Osith is a great little town. Clinker built houses and hardly any pavements. Here's the thing. I've noticed that a fantastically high proportion of inconsiderately parked cars a BMWs, usually driven by prematurely bald men. And baldness is linked to high testosterone levels. And it's the testosterone that makes it so hard for them to see the world through the eyes of another person. Like a pedestrian, for instance. But to more spiritual matters. St Osith has an abbey and a perfect little church. Western Christians have an unpleasant habit of being rather sniffy at the insanity of other people's religious beliefs. Elephants that drip milk and fat happy men wearing nappies. But some Christian saints are real Lulus. St Osith is a classic. Well-born woman, didn't like her husband, went to join the nuns. When told to take a Bible to another nun, she falls into a creek, stays beneath the water for three days, comes back to life and the Bible is still dry. Then later on in her life, when she's an abbess, she confronts some marauding Vikings. They cut off her head. She picks it up, walks to the abbey and knocks on the door as a way of warning the other nuns that the Vikings are coming. Lovely story, and I have to remind you that she's a properly paid up member of the horde of heaven-dwelling saints approved by the Catholic Church. Needless to say, her ghost walks the marshes at night, carrying her head neatly tucked under her arm and digging insane geometric patterns in the salt marshes, for all I know. Across the causeway is Point Clear. Very weird from the air. Tidy geometric patterns of the caravans, and just as weird from ground level. Behind the gates, they have their own shops and bars. We Brits can be amazingly well disciplined at times. Oh, 
Turning north up the coast a little is Blakeston Hole, just a small inlet snaking up through the salt marshes. Halfway up, there's the remains of a cableway that used to bring shingle from the beach to barges in the creek. It's a massive bird reserve. The birds seem completely oblivious to my quiet boat. Well worth spending a night on the mud, hidden away up the creek. Then leaving Blakestone and heading north, just time to stop at Second Beach for a while on the outside of the spit that protects and forms Blakeston Hole. When I sailed in this area, the GP14 fleet used to have barbecues over here. Now landing is restricted to a narrow strip of beach, but it's still worth a visit at Spring Lows. Beachcombing turns up some really bizarre shells. Just look at this. The life that is down there is just amazing. I mean, look at these shells. Is such a mixture of things. The next section of my slow coastal exploration will take me up the Côte d'Azur of Essex. I'll be explaining the subtle differences between a caravan park and Frinton on Sea. And I'll be exploring three wonderful sailing locations the Orwell, the Stour, and the labyrinths of the Walton backwaters. The thing about a flat place is that it really makes you concentrate on the sky. Beautiful, I mean it's just what you dream about. Uh, a new anchorage, uh, new water to sail in. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> uh, it doesn't get better than this. I mean this is absolutely splendid. <laughs> the sea slug's home for the next few weeks will be a tiny muddy estuary sandwiched between two caravan parks but it's only costing £20 a month and it comes with as much mud as you could ever want. 